Hello, it's Graham here from The Goon and the Geek, also known around the interwebs as Black73Cat, and you join me for part one of a series of Let's Plays of Quest of Dungeons. Uh, Quest of Dungeons, little, very simple, straightforward roguelike, but very, very addictive. It's kind of got me hooked over the last week or two, and um, I thought I'd, uh, I'd share my experience with you guys. Um, my experience being very, very poor gameplay. <laughs> I'm not very good at it. I didn't. I'm not making any claims to be an expert. I'm, this isn't a tutorial by any means. This is just me playing the game, um, for your amusement. Because I will die lots. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk in a minute. Let's just go, jump straight in. Uh, we'll start a new game. Uh, yes, we will overwrite. Um, we will choose our character, standard sort of roguelike fare. We have a warrior, we have a wizard, we have an assassin, and we have a shaman or shaman, whichever you prefer. Um, I prefer the warrior just suits my gameplay. I have had a quick go with the other three, but never got on with them very well. Um, although, I think further down the line, I will probably jump in and try these three guys again, because it seems a little bit unfair to leave them sort of left out sitting in the cold. Um, and I'm sure this guy would like to have a rest while this lot go into the dark dungeon to meet their doom. So, um, the warrior is so your standard warrior. He's a mighty warrior, specialised in handling swords. He's very capable in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and that suits me fine. Um, difficulty wise now I am a woeful gamer. We have the option of easy, normal, hard or hell um, I am a very very hopeless and useless gamer but I'm not a wuss so we will not be playing on easy. We will be playing on normal and we will jump in at that. I'll let this sort of play through. There's a little bit of dialogue which is moderately amusing. You might like to watch it or read it um, I, I will try not to interfere um, and I will try not to skip through it because um, it's a bit funny. It's sort of I've, got, I've just got to leave it hanging while it plays through so uh, yeah, enjoy Start. There we go. So basically, this evil lord has nicked all the light and put it inside a lantern, which I guess is what we've got to try and find. I haven't found it yet. I think it's very deep down in the dungeon. Dungeons. Four heroes join forces. <laughs> so basically, this little guy's being stitched up. His three mates have just turned their back on him and sent him off to his doom. Which is why I feel we need to play as the other characters pretty soon. Just so the little uh, the little warrior fella can have a bit of revenge and uh, send one of his compadres to uh, fight the demons in the deep dark dungeon. He is so dead. Totally. It's a dark night with just a gentle breeze in the air. You finally reach the ruins of old Umfar Mansion. But who knows what secrets and horrors lie inside? And will you survive? Clearly not, because I'm in control. Of course I'm not going to survive. So here we go. Uh, standard roguelike. Um, I like the control system on this. I am uh, fairly new to um, to PC gaming, so I can't master the old uh, WASD keyboard thing. Um, which is why I like this so much, because it is a, a simple point and click. Or it can be. You can use the keys to control it if you wish, but um, I prefer just to click around with the mouse. Normally, I would run a mile at turn-based gaming. It's not my thing at all. However, I really like how this plays. It plays really, really well. It's very smooth and very easy to get to grips with. It took me a little while, but um, very easy to get to grips with. So, uh, ooh, we're going into quite a few enemies here. So I will right-click on the mouse, which selects my secondary sort of power, which at the minute I only have Berserk, which does what you'd normally expect Berserk to do in any any video game. And we select that by clicking right-click, left-click. And there he goes. He is now Berserk. We have a little skull up here. Um, and it runs for 19 turns. You're filled with rage and this makes you stronger. Attacking recklessly also makes you receive more damage. So yes, you're quite careless with your defense, but it does help you to dish out a bit more. Um, I found that doorways are very useful in this game. When you are attacked by multiple enemies, if you hide in a doorway, it sort of restricts them. Um, so only one can attack you at a time rather than getting swarmed by them. Um, this is a trap. If I click it, I've, I, I can either disarm it, in which case you'll get... Um, uh, well, in that case, I just got an achievement. Um, you will get uh, some goodies, or most of the time, though, when you do that, it will trigger a trap, and a couple of baddies will drop down on your head. Um, 
nothing major really nothing too drastic to worry about uh standard sort of roguelike action adventure smash everything everything can possibly contain loot and um, that includes tombs um, nothing like a bit of grave robin in the morning um also what i've also found is as you go through a doorway these gates are locked and you have to click on them to unlock them um, is to click the gate and be very cautious before heading through because every level contains a boss and if you come across that boss too soon um, this could be very very uh, problematic if you are not geared up to um, to take him on or her on um, so I always click on the gate allow it to open have a quick peek in the room and be ready to dash back out and lock the gate again because if you don't the boss will just chase you out of that room and will hunt you down so uh, click on the gate have a quick peek in, get ready to dash back, and if need be, lock the door and send the room back into darkness. Um, thus imprisoning the uh, the boss. The little purple swirly things here are teleporters. Um, they come in quite handy later on in the game. Um, I will leave those alone for now. Um, essentially, all you were doing here is just plodding through. Ooh, I just found a ring. Um, plodding through, collecting loot. Um, at this stage, now, as we walk around... The room might look empty, but it's sometimes worth just having a quick dash around because you can trigger hidden stashes um, and loot will drop down on your head. Let's open the inventory and have a look. So we did just find this, which is a light ring, which gives me an extra 12 defense. I don't have a ring equipped as standard, so we'll equip that now. Um, this is a little bit tricky to work out. Um, if I unequip this, so my defense has gone down to 6. Um, but this says it gives me 12 defense, but if I equip that, my defense only goes up to 7. I can't really understand what this little, um, the, these little numbers here uh, equate to. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, other things in our inventory, we've got a couple of uh, health potions or small health, tube, health tubes, which give us a little bit. We've got some uh, chicken legs, which give us a little bit of health. Uh, back and then these gems um, are just for selling you just sell them to, there's a shopkeeper on every level and you can just sell them uh, sell them onto him um, mana tube uh, gives us magic if we need it um, but we are not a magical character so we don't really need that um, so yeah for the initial part oh no I didn't want to do that let's go back in right <laughs> so there that's how a teleporter works um, on the map up here we can see I tend to like to leave my inventory open. On the map up here, we can see um, where we need to go. We can see where we've been. Um, and essentially, the best thing, the best way that I found to do it is to basically unlock and open, explore the whole of the whole of the floor before we're going down any deeper. Um, defeat the boss, collect as much loot as you can, um, level yourself up a little bit, ready for um, taking on the bigger, badder monsters below. Bigger, badder? Is that a way to describe monsters? I don't know. Jump back in the doorway take on this bat I've just leveled up you got this orange bar at the top here that grows along the top of the screen that's your um, that's your XP growing as you travel steal something out the bookcase smash a grave find some jewels have a quick run around see if we can trigger a secret stash nope and then we'll click this gate have a quick peek in yeah this is okay no boss in here. If you if you come upon a boss room, which you'll see, ho hopefully you'll see later on, um, it is quite apparent that you've hit the boss room quite quickly. So it, you have got a little bit of time to get out, especially with it being turn-based, but you just don't go in too deep. Otherwise, um, some of them can move quite quickly and they will... Um, oh, we've got a skeleton. Let's just hit Berserk here just to take this guy on. The skeletons aren't really all that tough, but they're a little bit tougher than the bats and the rats. So you can see we've got doors going off in all angles here. Standard sort of roguelike type stuff. Um, right, so this guy's a shopkeeper. Um, he's very, very handy. So if we go up and speak to him, uh, there's, a quite, <laughs> there's a lovely little change in music as you open his shop up. So he's got his own little funky tune. So we can see what we what he's got for sale here, which um, at the minute we haven't got much. We've only got 177 gold, so we can't really buy much. Um, now then, we can buy a mighty mace hammer, uh, but uh, a mighty masher mace, big hammer, but we require mace handling. Now we've got sword handling skills at the minute, being a... Um, 
being a warrior as you go around you can find books which uh, which can um, which from which you can learn spells or you can learn skills um, one of the skills that you can learn is mace handling um, if you learn that skill then you are able to wield yield wield wield a mace or a mace like weapon but there's no point in us buying that because um, we can't use it uh, we can buy keys you can some some doors are locked some chests are locked you need the keys standard sort of stuff I could buy an extra chicken leg if I want but we're okay for the minute um, and there we go so what we'll do here we will sell these these precious stones there's not the they don't make they're not for any anything other than just earning you some pennies so we'll sell those we've got 200 gold can we afford anything no not at all so um we'll say goodbye to him for now and the music will music will change back to the evil doom music so yes, this is a turn-based game, but it doesn't really feel turn-based. It it runs really, really quickly. Um, I, in fact, I have to sort of remind myself that it's turn-based sometimes and realise that I can just think about what I'm about to do next and maybe not just go in and left-click wildly to uh, to swing my sword around, you know. Um, I'm not really used. I'm a console gamer. I, I always have been. I've never really done any PC gaming at all. Um, but um, I've got a little bit disheartened with the whole sort of AAA multiplayer grindy titles that are coming out uh, at the minute, and um, I, I'm kind of moving towards the, the more indie side of things. And um, when I started looking around a bit, it, obviously there is a huge ocean of indiness on Steam for you to dive into, and. Um, Lots, lots of these lovely little roguelikes, and being as that's my sort of my squeeze, it sort of, sort of seemed worth investigating. And when I did look in and realised that I could, um, I could plug in a, an Xbox 360 controller, and um, sort of on some of the games, I didn't have to do the whole WASD thing. I could, I could actually use a controller and feel normal. Um, <laughs> sorry, I don't mean that to sound offensive to any any PC gamers. It just it, the, the PC gaming is just not normal to me. I, I can't. I've, I've never been able to work out how to use a keyboard. Um, so uh, so yeah, it, that that made a difference. And then when I started seeing the the, the abundance of these sort of little indie roguelike type games that were on offer, um, I thought, you know what, I need to look into this a bit more. So I've, got, I've built up quite a library over the last few weeks. Um, I will bring some more, not reviews because I'm not really, uh, I'm, I'm not very good at gaming, so therefore I don't think I'm qualified to uh, to do reviews as such. But um, I will do some um, some sort of maybe quick looks at a glance sort of. Uh, Ooh, um, uh, sort of videos on, on some of the other little indie games that I've discovered over the last few weeks and, uh, and, and others that I will discover hopefully going forward. Now then, this staircase here will take us down to the next floor. We don't want to go down there yet. There is lots to do on this level. We still haven't found the boss. We certainly haven't found all the treasure. If I bring the map up, we can see here we've uh, got more rooms going off down this way. We've got rooms going off down here. Um, and there will be rooms going off elsewhere as well, heading north, etc. Um, we haven't found any quests yet. Um, around the place we will find some little sort of totems which um, will give us a quest, um, which will be to find an item somewhere within the dungeon. Um, it'll give you a rough clue as to where that item is. It may mean backtracking. Um, to places that you've already been to. Uh, the, the, the item sort of unlocks after you've opened the quest. Um, so it may mean sort of backtracking to try and find it, but you do get quite a hefty XP reward for collecting them. Um, so it's, it, it, it is just, it is worth sort of trying to find any quests, um, etc., before you move on away from the current floor. Um, I've only ever got down as far as the floor number three. Um, what's beyond that? I don't know. Um, but being a randomly generated, is it procedurally generated roguelike? It could be anything that's down there. You just never know. I mean, sometimes I will start a game here and it will I will just die within the first couple of moves, really. Um, others, I will have a good run. I'll pick up some tasty loot first off. Um, and, uh, and and it'll be quite, uh, quite a productive run. Um, this one isn't going too badly at the minute. We're doing not too bad for money at this stage. We've got a fair bit to sell. This here will give us a little reward. A little perk so in this case it's given us extra shield for 99 turns well one turn is one move or one square within the game so um, you can use these little perks up quite quickly if you're not careful um, 
Oh, there you go. I just found a secret stash. There's no indication that that was there. It is just purely random. Walk over, as far as I can gather, walk over a particular stone or a particular bit of floor, and it will trigger the um, it will trigger the stash to drop. Um, so now we're just looking at the map. We need to work our way back. There's nothing else that's accessible over here, so we need to work our way back down to the south of the map and then I would imagine that this uh, entrance, this exit here will lead us back out to the west and probably further north as well um, hopefully as we find some um, as we find some quests and find some stuff to find so you can see my extra armor is almost gone now I've got 16 turns left it's it's just you know disappeared quite quickly um, just random as to whether it's useful to you or not at you know at the particular time you pick it up. Um, others will give you, uh, other certainly the only ones I've found at the minute uh, will give you um, uh, extra luck, so you'll find more loot. And um, this guy here, this skeleton, if you click on that, that's suicide, insta death. Um, so yes, don't click on him. Pick up a bit more gold, a bit more treasure. We're not doing too bad for money. Let's do a bit more grave robbing. Some more gold in there. These barrels, um, I think there must have been a little update to this because the, these barrels weren't in the game um, when I was playing a couple of days ago. I came back to it yesterday, a bottle of milk there which gives a little bit of health, um, came back to it yesterday and the barrels and coffins had appeared which I hadn't seen before, um, which is uh, possibly a good sign if it's, uh, if it's still being serviced. So this little purple fashion totem, uh, new quest journal, new quest added to journal. So we click on our journal and we've got to kill Novanima. Um, kill Nivanimath, beware he may not look it but he's very strong he was last seen at the north position of floor 1 now we've already explored as far as we can gather we've already explored all of the north position of floor 1 this is this area here, obviously so I'm guessing he's now spawned up there somewhere so we'll go back and find him at a later date but for now, we'll keep on going the, the way we are because what can happen is you can go through one of these um, entrances down here and it can open up a whole new avenue to go up around the side. So um, we'll, uh, we'll just plow on as we're going. We can, we're we're going to come back anyway later on. Oop, I didn't see him sneak up on me there. I wasn't paying attention. Level up. Good stuff. Bit of cheese. Bit of, bit of health. Every time you level up, your health bar refills, which is good. Um, it sometimes puts that little bit of jeopardy in when uh, when you're running low on health and you think, oh, should I use a health potion? Should I eat this last bit of food? I'm almost going to level up. And it's the gamble. It's the gamble. <laughs> um, I usually end up just dying. I always make the door. Oh, there's the boss. Get out. Shut the door. Get out. Shut the door. Oops. <laughs> Frantic click in there. So we know where the boss is. Okay. We don't want to go in there. We leave, we'll leave that door locked. Um... And uh, we'll come back to him later on. Bit of frantic mouse click in there. Um, but yeah, that, that, you see, that, that, that sums me up. I get panicky. I panic. Uh, we won't use the teleporter. We'll go through this gate here. The teleporters seem to be random. Um, there doesn't seem to be any sort of pattern as to where they actually take you. Um, at least not that I can see. But when you do go through one... If you jump straight back into it, it will take you back to where you came from. So there is a there there is a clear path between them. You've just you've just got to essentially jump into them to work out what that path is. Another quest here. We'll just deal with this little rat first. Drop the nice bit of loot. So this quest has been added. So what we got now? So we need to search for the skull of Grunt. Uh, find a skull of Grunt. Try searching at the south position of floor one. Well, we are currently. In the sort of mm, southeast, south, yeah, well, no, we are in the south, s south position, aren't we? Pretty much. So it could be anywhere around here. It could be in one of the rooms that we haven't visited yet. It could actually be in one of the rooms that we've already been through and cleared. They do, as I say, respawn after you pick up the quest. So um, we will go exploring if it doesn't become apparent pretty soon. Nice bit of loot dropping out the school desk there. Remember those desks you used to have at school with a lid that lift up, lifted up and you used to keep all of your books and pens and stuff in the box. I don't know why I thought, because oh, yeah, I was playing with a school desk. Ooh, got a new sword. Right, so I've picked up a, um, picked up a big axe here, a big mace, but I haven't got the, the, the mace handling skill, so that's no good to me. But I have picked up, um, it's a damaged Master Sword Seeker. It gives me an extra three, so I may as well equip it. Um, and uh, I think we'll have a chicken leg as well, because we are a little bit down on the old uh, on the old health your health does regenerate slowly as you move around 
Um, but it's, it is very slowly. And um, chicken legs and, and cheese and things like that are quite cheap to, to buy from the, from the store anyway. So it's always worth just topping up if you start getting a bit low rather than running into a bunch of enemies. I'm just going to have a quick run around here and see if I can pop any secret stashes. Maybe not. Not to be. It is totally random. There's no way to sort of uh, predict where they're going to be. Another teleporter. And a room heading north. This bat is asleep. Get a cheeky one in before he wakes up. Sorry if you can hear my mouse clicking. It is um, it's it's not a very expensive mouse, and it is rather loud on the click. It is rather loud on the click. So let's see. Let's bring the map up and have a good look. So we need to go up to this room to the north and this room to the south of the large room. Through here. Um, so we're not doing too bad for cash. We've got a fair bit to sell when we get back up to the uh, to the vendor. But we aren't doing very well loot-wise. We haven't found anything really exciting yet. Um, again, it's purely random. Um, I've been at sort of this stage before now and had some uh, swanky weapons and armor um, already. It is just purely, purely random. Um, and I also haven't unlocked any extra skills or any extra spells yet either, which is... A little bit. Say spells. They're not really spells with the with the uh, the warrior. That room was totally useless. Um, they're sort of like like the berserk mode. There'll be a different one way. I think you can scare your. Um... Oh, there's the skull. So that's a quest completed. Um, so I've just picked up the XP and the, the the prize for that. So that was the skull of grunt. So now I've got to kill the. Uh... Kill the other chap. Let's have a look. See if we can go up here. Yeah, we've got to go up here. Um, most of the time, when it gets when I get one of these kill quests, um, I uh, we got extra armor off of that one. Um, I kind of half the time I don't even realize that I've actually killed him. <laughs> it just looks like another enemy. Um, but maybe that's just me and my um, inability to comprehend what's going on around me. Don't run. Uh, I'm going to hit berserk mode here because we've got a wizard up there who's going to shoot fire at me. And I need to deal some big damage to take him down before he takes me down. Oh, we found a hat. Now, as standard with the warrior, I think with all the classes, you don't come with any headwear. Um, so I've just basically got a strong head, which will give me an extra 12 defense. Now then, at the minute, we're rocking 10 defense. Now then, when I put that ring on, we only had um, 7 defense. The only thing I've added is the sword, which has no defense perk to it at all. So why has that gone up to 10? It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, let's put the hat on. So let's equip this. So our defense has gone up to 11. Still doesn't really seem to make any uh, any difference. I mean, the Our health points don't go up. Um, it just, I don't know. It doesn't seem to make any difference. But hey, um, he's saying he's hungry. No, you're not. Um, unfortunately, the one thing that would be nice is, um, along the lines of Binding of Isaac, it would be really nice if, as you equipped armor and, um, and apparel, that it actually showed on your little character. Um, it's quite a shame that you kind of, uh, you, you, you don all these, these bits of gear and you can't see it. Um, it would be just nice to see your character sort of dress up and change as you go through, um. But then again, you know, I, I don't want the moon on a stick. The game is good enough as it is. It just would be nice to uh, to see that happen. This here is a bear trap. Don't stand on that. It does you no good at all. It just loses um, health points. I think they only take about 10 health points off you. I'm going to berserk again because that's now cooled down. And I will take on this wizard here. Oh, I better eat. I better eat. I better eat quickly. Eat. Eat. And I will eat my cheese as well. Eat, and I will also eat an apple. Goodness me, I wasn't paying attention there. I've just picked up some fish. Now fish, it's raw. So it will give you a bit of health points, but it's going to make you sick. So I usually just sell these to the vendor for a few pence. Um, it's hardly worth, uh, hardly worth eating. A bit more gold, even though it's silver. Go figure. 
Ooh, that was a nice little um, nice little find there. Ah, oh, I've minimised my uh, inventory again. I like to keep the inventory on show. I don't know why. It just sort of makes me feel happy. And people keep saying to me, Graham, you should be happier. You should be a happy chappy. So I figure if keeping my inventory open makes me happy, then I should keep my inventory open. Right, we've kind of explored a fair old bit. I'm seeing somewhere over there we need to go. We need to get over here now. I think everything else has been done around here. And then we need to go back up to the north end. So the only doorway I can see is possibly one there and one there. So let's go south. Ah, the only way we can go. So let's go south and see if that's a door. I'm not sure if that's a door or not. It's hard to kind of tell. Those uh, the little perk um, buttons only work once. They don't. Uh, they don't um, recharge or respawn or whatever you want to call it. Uh, oh yes, we have got a door down here that I missed. So let's jump in here and see what treasures it will give us. We're not doing bad here. We're not doing bad. Um, what I sort of think I will do is, ideally, I would like to um, to do uh, full playthroughs uh, um, every time I uh, every time I record a video. But I am aware that um, these can be quite long games. <laughs> sometimes they can sometimes be very, very, very short. Um, so if it does go on for too long, I will probably. Whoa! Let's go on. Let's do it. Come on! Ah, quick, 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 quick! Oh no! <laughs> I talked that up. You know what? I completely forgot that he was in there. Oh, you lunatic. You lunatic. Oh, dear. Oh, well. Oh, well. Just as I was saying, I didn't want to keep the episodes for too long. That was probably a bit of fate showing itself there. That was... <laughs> oh, that was disastrous. Even by my standards, that was ridiculous. So there you go. So then you get a little summary of what, of, um, of what you'd done over the last game. Uh, so we lasted 23 minutes. We had 1,912 turns. Um, we uh, clicked. Our, I clicked my mouse 986 times. I'm a bit of a frantic mouse clicker. And we killed 45 monsters. But no bosses. Oh dear. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure if that was a good start or not. It's kind of bit kept it quite concise, I suppose, down to below half an hour. Um, and I don't need to interrupt this one to bring you a part two of the same game. But um, hopefully you've enjoyed that. Hopefully I haven't waffled on to you too much. And um, hopefully you'll join me again for more. I will hopefully carry on doing... Uh, hopefully. I'm saying hopefully an awful lot. So hopefully I will stop saying hopefully quite so much in the, in the future. And uh, we will see what happens in further episodes of this wonderful little game game of quest of dungeons i really love it um, and i hope you're enjoying it too so thanks very much for watching hit that like button if you have actually liked what you've seen or listened to or watched yeah hit the like button anyway just hit it it takes a second just hit it it's a little thumb just hit it it helps um, give us a sub sub give us a subscribe if you want to see what else we've got coming up on the channel um, I'm going to carry on doing Quest of Dungeons I will do a few little indie sort of uh, quick looks um, at the Steam games uh, we've got a Minecraft uh, dual play uh, dual play uh, yeah dual play two of us playing Minecraft myself and my co-host Toon Manic who is also my brother playing Minecraft um, Toon Manic has also done a great series on um, on uh, Unravel um, and uh, also on SimCity. And there are other few little gems kicking around on our channel. So please have a look at The Goon and the Geek. Follow us on Twitter, at Goon and Geek. Say hello, and we'll say hello back. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you again soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.